tell me if this sounds familiar. You've got new goals and you're excited at the start, but you never follow through and stay committed to them. I was a chronic goal setter and forgetter. And after lots of failures and disappointments, I finally cracked the code on how to actually achieve the goals I set myself. Today, we're gonna talk about the most powerful tools for focus, willpower, procrastination, and motivation so that you can change your life. This video is a part of a three-part series. So if you're interested in how I get clear on my goals and what I want to achieve in the year, or some of the common mistakes and reasons you may not be achieving your goals, I will link my other videos in the series down below. If you're new here, hi, my name is Cadence, and I'm so happy to have you on this channel. I share and test evidence-based health and fitness tools so that we can reach our health goals together. Let's talk about tools to conquer procrastination. I think for me, procrastination is probably the biggest reason why I don't hit my goals. I know I have found myself in this situation before. Let me know if this sounds familiar. We can find ourselves procrastinating by doing things that we otherwise wouldn't want to do, but there's something else we don't want to do so badly. We're willing to do something that still sucks. For example, during finals week in college, I would always deep clean my entire house because I was trying to avoid studying. So even though I would never want to clean the house or look forward to that, I always look forward to it during finals week because I was procrastinating on studying. I fondly call this productive procrastination, but it's not truly productive if it is taking you away from your main most important goal. It's also dangerous because it gives us this false sense of accomplishment that we're doing something good for ourselves when really we are just diverting our attention from what's most important. When we're procrastinating, essentially we're in a dopamine trough in our brains. Dopamine is what is gonna motivate you to keep pushing towards your goal. So how do we get out of that trough or that dip in dopamine? The first thing is to do something that's more effortful or painful. Do something that gets your body into a different state. Like maybe you go and splash some cold water on your face. Maybe you do a couple of minutes of meditating. The key is it has to sound bad to you. <laughs> like if you're someone who loves splashing cold water in your face, that doesn't count, that is cheating. Find something that really sucks, but is safe for you to do both mentally and physically. The reason that this works is that it makes the trough, the dip a little bit steeper and the steeper it falls, the more quickly it'll recover. Let's talk about focus tools. Achieving our goals is the culmination of lots of small actions that chip away at our goals and help us get there over time. So staying focused and engaged when we're working towards our goals is essential. One of the things I like to do is clear my technological space. One way to kind of get a sense of how many notifications you're getting is, well, you can actually go into your settings if you have an iPhone and see how many notifications you're getting. But I will leave all of my notifications on uncleared for a day and I will look at them across the full day and I'll go into my apps and I will turn off notifications for stuff that's silly. Like I don't need Target notifying me that I have an item in my cart. I go through and I unsubscribe from emails, from text chains and turn off notifications for apps that I don't need notifications for. Because for me, this is just mental clutter and distractions for my goals. Ideally, I won't be on my phone at all when I am working towards my goals, but let's be honest here. Sometimes we still are. I try to limit the distractions on my phone as much as possible. And when I'm in a working session, working towards my goal, I always try to turn my phone on airplane mode, do not disturb or turn it off, put it in another room completely. It's incredible how much more productive your working session can be if you are not distracted. The next thing that really helps me focus is clearing my physical space. So cleaning up my office. I'm one of those people that when I'm in a cluttered space, it is so hard for me to focus. So if you're one of those people, do yourself a favor and get it clean. I know some people don't mind at all. And if that's you, go you. When you start to feel unfocused, here's a tool that you can use to refocus yourself on whatever you're working on. Stare at the same spot in your workspace. So this could be a notebook, a book you're reading, a laptop that you're working on, etc. Stare at one spot for 30 to 60 seconds. So that will actually help you to re-engage your focus in whatever you're working on and find it a little bit easier to stay focused during that session. All right, let's talk about willpower tools. The really amazing thing is that we can increase our tenacity and willpower to go after what we want. And the tool is beautifully, but also terribly simple. Do more hard things and you will be able to do more hard things. It sounds like an oh duh kind of thing, but there's actually a part of your brain. Okay, fine, I'll tell you what it's called. The anterior mid cingulate cortex. The activity in that part of your brain increases when you are good at doing hard things. So this could be as simple as what Andrew Huberman calls a micro suck. Maybe you see a piece of candy in the fridge and you really want it and you're like, nope, don't have it, that sucks. Or maybe you get to the end of the workout and you are exhausted and you're like, now I'm just gonna finish up with 10 pushups that you really don't wanna do. Maybe you, like me, really can struggle with meditating, so spending a few minutes alone with your thoughts could be an example of this. You could turn your shower cold at the end, avoid going on your phone for a few minutes when you really want to, push yourself for a few seconds longer than what you would normally do in a plank. The key is finding things that sound pretty bad to you. So no cheating, if any of these examples sounded fun to you, then they don't count. I really wish there was a magic trick besides 
besides doing hard things to increase your ability to do hard things. But the good news is, is you can start anywhere, no matter how small it is. The more you do things that are tough, but you feel are good for you, the more easily you'll be able to do tough things. Let's chat about motivation tools. There are so many different tools to improve your motivation. So I'm just going to give you a few today. And if you're interested in more, let me know. One is envisioning an older future version of yourself and how your actions right now will impact that person and change outcomes for them. Goals become less rewarding for us when they exist in the future, but it's really important for us at the same time, of course, to have long-term goals for our future selves. But our reward systems in our brain are way less salient the further away the reward is. If I told you that you could have a cookie in a week, you'd be like, okay, cool, but doesn't really do much for me, probably gonna forget about it before then. But if I told you you're gonna have a cookie in five minutes, you'd probably be pretty hyped. There was a really interesting study where they showed people a digitally aged version of themselves and then tested how much money they were willing to invest in their retirement, saving for their future self. People who saw that older version of themselves invested way more than people who did it. All you need to do is visualize yourself in the future, whether you did that thing or didn't do that thing you're trying to do, and you can use that to motivate yourself. This is more so something that you can use and abuse once you have this information than like a tool, heightened levels of focus and motivation occur for us at these three times after waking. The first is 30 minutes after waking. The second is three hours after waking. And the third is 11 hours after waking. So I like to try and schedule in my most important things to use those timings to my advantage, knowing that my hormones are perfectly balanced for me to get out and get after it. This motivating visualization tool has actually changed my life. And I'm so excited to share this with you. At the beginning of whatever your practice is to achieve your goals, like it could be your workout, it could be cooking a healthy meal, it could be sitting down to learn something new, whatever it is, ask yourself how motivated you are on a scale of one, very unmotivated to 10, very motivated. If you're between five and 10 feeling pretty motivated, then visualizing yourself succeeding can be a helpful way to get you in the zone to have a good session. But what's really powerful, especially when you're feeling unmotivated is to actually visualize yourself failing. Imagine yourself a year from now, if you didn't reach that goal that you're so excited about and so inspired by. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, visualizing yourself succeeding is only really effective at the start of the goal setting process, but after that, the effectiveness kind of wears off for us. Routinely visualizing failure can nearly double the probability that we reach our goals. What I like to do is take the opposite action, knowing that I'm getting myself further away from that possible reality. So whatever would cause you to fail, go out, get after it and get it done and prevent that bad future, that future we don't want from coming true. This runs counter to a lot of the pop culture recommendations on this topic, which are always to visualize a positive future to see yourself succeeding. And yes, that can be valuable at the start of your journey when you're setting and picking important goals to you, thinking about your why, things like that. But unfortunately, that motivation just runs out when we get to the middle and towards the end of our goal process. I think finding balance here is really important though, because we don't want to be living in a constant state of fear and anxiety, but this is also a really powerful tool to help us reach our goals. And we all want to reach our goals, right? We can't talk about motivation without talking about dopamine. So let's talk about some dopamine tools. It's really, really helpful in pursuit of our goals to have as much baseline dopamine in our brains and bodies as possible because we need the dopamine to take action towards our goals and ultimately achieve them. It's a really common misconception that dopamine is a happiness hormone when really it's a motivator. Here are some tools to raise your baseline levels of dopamine and thus levels of motivation. Getting a good solid eight hours of sleep is essential. Viewing sunlight in the morning is helpful. Cold showers or cold immersion anywhere in the range of 30 seconds to three minutes has been proven effective for a total of up to 11 and a half minutes per week. Consuming caffeine 90 minutes after waking and ideally more than 12 hours before going to sleep, just so it doesn't interrupt our sleep, which is also super important, can help with levels of dopamine. Exercise and non-sleep deep rest can also help. And I will link a non-sleep deep rest protocol in the description if you want to try it out. If we constantly put ourselves into the mindset that we are failing and not doing a good job and we are really hard on ourselves, we don't actually churn out as much dopamine. So it's really important that we recognize when we're doing well and give ourselves a little bit of a cognitive reward for it. I like to call this a dopamine re-up. So giving yourself a little bit of a boost when you're doing things well. It's really important during the goal process to create milestones and checkpoints. Ideally, these are every day, couple of days or once a week to check in with your goals, your progress, update your plans or your process as needed if something's not working. If you are moving closer towards your goals like you had planned, it's a good time to think, okay, I'm doing a good job. Even that can actually stimulate some dopamine, which is really crazy. Just thinking, 
I'm doing a good job, go me. Or if you're like me, you can do an actual real life reward of something you like doing, something you like eating, something like that. For a while, when I was trying to get myself into a good gym routine, I would go get a boba every week that I did all of my workouts. And you will be on your way to achieving your goals and creating the life of your dreams. If you're watching this in real time, I am in the middle of a 12 days of fitness holiday series where I'm doing 12 long videos and 25 short videos in the month of December, focused on all aspects of health and fitness. And I would love to have you come tag along if you're interested. If you found this video helpful, the best way to support my channel is give the video a like and hit subscribe if you would like to see more from me. And I will see you next time.